Welcome back to the Lars Larson Show. It's Conspiracy Theory Thursday. Glad to have you with me and glad to have you call the show as well at 866-HEY-LARS. That's 866-439-5277. Emails go to talk at LarsLarson.com. Well, a couple of decisions, if you want to count them as two separate decisions, by the United States Supreme Court today involving Donald Trump's tax returns. You see, Nancy Pelosi wants a copy of those returns because she's just sure that if she could look at them, she could find something dirty about Trump in there, probably connected to Russia. Well, she got to know. And the district attorney of Manhattan, a guy by the name of Cyrus Vance, and there isn't a more political district attorney in America by my measure than Cyrus Vance, he wants them for his grand jury that is looking into, there may be other issues, but primarily the allegation that Donald Trump somehow improperly paid non-disclosure payments to uh, the porn star Stormy Daniels. So the Supreme Court said yes to that one. I thought we'd get a view of what this actually means for this president and perhaps for future presidents by talking to a man who knows his stuff, Hans von Spakowski, Senior Legal Fellow at the Heritage Foundation. Hans, welcome back to the program. Lars, thanks for having me back. So tell me this, uh, just in broad terms, what does it mean when the Supreme Court says yes, the Manhattan District Attorney having impaneled a grand jury to investigate Donald Trump is entitled to get some copies of some of the president's uh, financial statements? Well, they did say that. I think actually it was a mistake because it's going to make presidents uh, the target of the many partisan county and city prosecutors all over the country. But it's, look, the guy isn't going to immediately get these documents. Because what the court said basically was, no, a president isn't entitled to absolute immunity from local grand jury proceedings. And no, there's no heightened scrutiny when a court is looking at what the local grand jury is trying to get. But on the other hand, the Supreme Court said um, a, a president like President Trump can challenge this kind of a subpoena by uh, raising the issue that it, it will impair his duties as the president or that it's intended to punish him for past actions uh, politically, not having anything to do with actual law enforcement, or that the prosecutor is acting in bad faith. And they clearly left it open. You know, they remanded this case back down to the trial-level court, uh, and they clearly left it open for the president's lawyers to now raise all of those issues. So if he can raise all of those issues, I, I have no doubt. Look, the, the trial judge there is, is very partisan, very much an anti-Trumper. Uh, even if they raise all these issues legitimately, I'm sure the judge is going to rule against them, but then they're going to appeal, and it's going to come right back to the Supreme Court. All right, so so we're going to have to take another bite of the apple. But the implication you just talked about, I wrote about it in my commentary this morning, far less knowledgeably than you do, Hans, which is why I call on you. But I said, imagine if a President Joe Biden, I know the, the, the idea is kind of comical, it's a laugh out loud for me to imagine Joe Biden wins the presidency. But if he does, there are some conservative prosecutors out there. Could any one of them throughout America say, I'm going to impanel a grand jury and consider whether or not uh, Joe Biden's actions with regard to China and his son Hunter and a lot of money that Chinese investors put into Hunter's uh, uh, hedge fund company or, say, Ukraine and monies that were paid to his son and then the president or the vice president at the time, Biden, uh, decided to get a prosecutor fired. I'm going to impanel a grand jury to investigate whether or not any of those constituted a crime. You can imagine any future president would then be subject to this kind of scrutiny from literally dozens, if not hundreds, of prosecu prosecutors across America, couldn't they? Yes, that you, that you certainly could. Now, as you mentioned, there were two other cases before the court today. In that case, it was congressional committee trying to subpoena exactly the same kind of financial records and tax returns. And there again, the the court punted the case back down to the lower court because what they said there was that um, these subpoenas by Congress raised separation of power uh, issues and the possibility that Congress is not acting from a legitimate legislative purpose, but because of partisan motivations and harassment. And what they said was that the lower court had not considered what they should have, which is, does, does Congress actually have a valid legislative purpose in trying to get these financial records? 
is the subpoena as narrow as possible and no broader than needed? And what is the burden on the president and his ability to carry out his duties? And what they basically said was, we're sending this back down to the lower court. You have to re-examine these subpoenas and look at all of these different issues. Again, in these cases, they have very liberal anti-Trump judges involved. I think the president will raise very legitimate issues. I think the judges will rule against the president. And once again, they're going to appeal and going to come back to the Supreme Court. Well, and, and was I right in stating that what Pelosi's basic case is, I think the president had some dealings with Russia. Publicly, it's been said that she she believes that the president, prior to being president, may have done business with Russian companies. Well, when he was a private citizen, was there any possible legal violation if, if he took a loan from a Russian company or, or did business with a Russian company? The man does have hotels around the world in various places that have his name on the front that would require doing business overseas. Is that something that precludes you from being president of the United States? No, it doesn't. And there's absolutely nothing illegal about doing business overseas. I mean, think about how many American companies and how many American businesses uh, do that all the time. Look, there is no legitimate legislative purpose uh, with what the House committees are, are doing. They claimed it was intended to see whether uh, presidents are properly audited by the IRS. Well, there haven't been any allegations whatsoever that the IS, IRS hasn't uh, properly audited the president. So it, it, this is just a fishing expedition to try to find something politically embarrassing in what the president has done. And it's really outrageous because, you know, federal law, makes our tax returns, the tax returns of, uh, of citizens, it makes them confidential. Yep. And yet Congress is trying to basically breach that. And I think people need to realize that if these House committees can get the president's uh, audit, uh, I'm sorry, tax returns because they don't like him politically, anybody else in the country who they don't like because he's criticizing members of Congress they could try to get your tax returns, too, by any of these House committees that, that the president somehow violated federal tax laws. And even if they had any such evidence, they're not the law enforcement agency of the U.S. That's the executive branch. And yep. like I said, but there's no evidence whatsoever that the president has violated any tax laws. And that's why you can tell, like I said. There's no legislative purpose to these subpoenas. It's just a fishing expedition to get uh, stuff that they think might be embarrassing. to. Absolutely. Hans von Spakowski from the Heritage Foundation.